As the Mortal Kombat series was reaching the fourth entry, Midway knew that they had to change it up and do something different. The past three games were great, no doubt, but players were beginning to get bored of the same formula. The Nintendo 64 and the PS1 were the new consoles, capable of much more than simple 2D sprites. Midway decided to hop into the 3D gaming world with Mortal Kombat 4. At this point in the late 90s, unfortunately arcades were beginning to dissipate. Games at home were really starting to look like the games in arcades, if not better. The thing is, consoles at the time may have had the processing power, but they didn't have the storage, specifically the Nintendo 64 version. They had to cut down the roster to only 15 combatants. They had to cut the stage count down to 10. This isn't the biggest deal in the world so long as they deliver, but with these things being cut down, they added a couple things. The first being usable weapons, the second being cutscenes. These are really the two large things that were added to the actual game. Getting the game to actually cooperate with me was the first fight of this video. My god, GOG, you spend all of this time bringing the game to PC and adding improvements just to not give it native fucking D-pad support? Really? I can guarantee you that 95% of all Mortal Kombat players, hardcore or casual, play the game with a D-pad. That's how fighting games are meant to be played. Not to mention that even when I got the D-pad working, thanks to this amazing guy, special shout out to Fate, but I was having a problem where the game thought that I had two controllers plugged in, but I didn't. The game just decided that I was both player one and player two. Scouring the GOG forums, I came across a post that said to not touch the keyboard at all on startup, and that should work. It didn't work, but it was close. I actually had to use nothing but the keyboard until I got into the game for it to work. This doesn't make any sense, but after 40 minutes of trial and error, I was happy to just have a functioning game. Let's talk about how I'm going to be playing this game. In previous videos, I gave myself five continues on each singular fight. If I lose all five in one fight, then I have to quit and move on. I changed it to three during the last video. In Mortal Kombat 4, the default amount of continues is a total of three across the entire duration of playing the tower. Yes, I can change it to nine. However, I want to have a vanilla as possible experience. So I will only be having three continues for each fighter I play as. As consolation for this, I'll also be playing a round of endurance as each character. Oh yeah, Endurance Round, that's a new game mode added in this game. It's essentially the tower, except instead of it ending at some point and you having continues, you lose a single time and it ends. Each fight is only one round. I'm not playing gold for the sake of time, I'm going to be going out of town soon and I want to make sure that I can get this video out before then as well as the next video coming out while I'm out of town. I'll be playing the entirety of the ending cutscenes as well because I think they're hilarious and easily the most iconic part of the game. If you enjoy this video and you don't want to miss future videos from me, please consider subscribing. I seriously appreciate everybody so much for giving me the time of day and enjoying the content. So, with that preluding information out of the way, let's get into the story. Shinnok, who is an elder god, uh, was banished to the nether realm a very long time ago. Quan Chi, who is a sorcerer, decided to help him out and get him out of the nether realm. And uh, so Shinnok is basically trying to exact revenge on the elder gods. In order to stop Shinnok, Raiden is calling the earth realm warriors once again to help out in the fight. Now, let's get into the characters. Kai. He was part of the Lotus Society. He met Liu Kang and reunited with him to help Raiden beat Shinnok. Oh boy, this isn't a great start. First of all, who? This guy isn't very unique or cool. I mean, come on, fireball, flying kick, give me a break. Kai's moveset is pretty much just a fucking book with no words in it. Better yet, there isn't even a cover. It's just a whole bunch of pieces of paper that have absolutely nothing written on them. His design is very boring, and his moveset is boring. If you love Kai, all power to you. But you probably also pour milk before your cereal. I'm not even bitching and moaning about the character because I did bad. I made it to fight 5 without much issue, 
Jarek wiped me out and the endurance round felt pretty pointless because I died in the second fight after getting a flawless victory on the first. Overall, Kai is just a goofball and I have absolutely no interest in him as a character or in playing as him. You fought well, Kai. You are now a true Shaolin warrior. Thanks, Raiden, but I'm not interested in becoming a Shaolin warrior anymore. I've got too many of my own problems to deal with. What will you do next? I don't know. Wander the earth? Search for my soul? That kind of thing. Well, perhaps you could use this on your journey. Your lightning staff? It holds the power of thunder and lightning. Wield it wisely, for it can show you the way to immortality. You've earned it. Thank you, Raiden. I will not fail. Raiden. He comes back to Earth, he wants to protect the Elder Gods by defeating Shinnok. Raiden was pretty fun in this game, his moveset is really limited, and I tried to use the weapon but the button combo wasn't working for some reason. I was scared when I found out that Goro was the sub-boss in this game, but I definitely felt better when I just spammed Lightning Bolt over and over again and he didn't stop me. I also beat Shinnok this way. So yeah, technically I beat the game on the second character. This makes me happy, because now I can finally say I have left the bullshit fuckery era of the 2D games. Shinnok. He was banished to the Nether Realms for being an asshole. Quan Chi frees him. He takes over Adenia and targets Raiden. I died in fight 3. Other than that, he just has impersonations, which are just Shang Tsung's fucking morphs but with a different name. Uh, can we get some originality? I've never really liked Shinnok. His design just seems weird to me and even in Mortal Kombat 10, which is my most played Mortal Kombat game, I hated Shinnok. Shao Kahn as a character has always been my favorite Mortal Kombat boss, but Shang Tsung is fine too. I just don't understand Shinnok, his impersonations are just lame, and the game freezes and has to load for a second if you use any of them, so it isn't even really worth the time. Dumbass character. For millions of years, I suffered in the bowels of the Netherrealm. You, Thunder God, are responsible for my suffering. Now the piteous mortals of Earth will pay for my grievance. You turned against your fellow Elder Gods. You betrayed your title. You deserve much worse. But it's too late, Raiden. I win. With the Elder Gods out of the way, I will take my rightful place as ruler of all eternity. I can already feel the power surging from within. You're mad. Farewell, Thunder God. <laughs> Liu Kang. He decides to go to Adenia to rescue Katana from Quan Chi. Unsuccessful, he gets the Earth Warriors to help. Liu Kang was pretty fun in this game as well. His bicycle kick was easy to pull off, his fireball was as well, and his flying kick was great as always. I didn't do as good as I did playing as Raiden, but hey, I did end up beating the fucking game again. The war is over. I have once again defended my title as champion of Mortal Kombat and defended the realm of Earth, but I have failed to save the realm of Edenia. In doing so, I have also lost Katana forever. Katana? Yes, Liu Kang. What it is hell? I. But I thought you were gonna look. With Shinnok's destruction, you have not only saved the Earth, but you've also saved my own realm. 
For that, I can never repay you. Knowing that you survived is all that I need. As heir to the throne of my realm, I offer you the chance to rule at my side. As King of Edenia, forever. I cannot accept your offer. I belong here on Earth as champion of Mortal Kombat. Then, I wish you good luck, Liu Kang, on all your journeys. Why do they talk like that, by the way? Look at his face! Goodbye, Princess Katana. He does not even care! He's a dumbass face! Oh my god! Reptile. A general in Shinnok's army, he was banished to the Netherrealm for genocide, responsible for the death of millions. Reptile keeps his teleport and acid spit, and also gets a powerful punch and a crawl. This is the point of playing when I started to feel like I was really getting the hang of it. The controls are starting to make sense, so the game does feel pretty satisfying. I managed to do a fatality on Jarek. Goro killed me. Fuck Goro. Died on the first fight of endurance. Our Lord Shinnok well in the destruction of Earth's warriors. Yes, we are most appreciative of your efforts. Now I wish to return in time to my home world before it was destroyed at the hands of Shao Kahn. As the new ruler supreme of all reality, Shinnok alone has the power to grant me this wish. You dare make such an impetuous request from your lord and master? It is a simple request for one of such great power. It is also not worth his attention. I demand it if it were not for warriors such as myself. His attack against Raiden's forces would have failed. Perhaps you can convey your feelings to Shinnok himself. What? Infidel! You are in no position to demand anything. I could kill you with a mere thought. But we had a deal. A deal? I am not a god of my word, reptile. All deals are off. Scorpion. Quan Chi gives Scorpion an offer. He gets life back if he is a warrior against the elders. Scorpion has ulterior motives. God damn, Scorpion is a lot of fun in this game. His moves just all flow together like butter. It's so easy to catch the AI off guard as him. It's so fun. He's fast, his spear is always awesome, his teleport punch is really solid in this game, and he can fucking breathe fire. This is definitely the most fun I've had a Scorpion in this series so far. I did good, but got fucked up by Goro. I thought that I was going to shit on this game initially, but looking past the laughable cutscenes and the player models and the less characters and the less stages, the actual core gameplay is pretty fun. By defeating you, Sub-Zero, I have avenged the death of my family and clan. Now my soul can finally rest. Your soul will never rest, Scorpion. The Lin Kuei may have been responsible for your murder, but your family's true killer still remains free. If you are not the murderer, then who is? I am the one you seek. To defeat my nemesis, Sub-Zero, I needed the power of a Spectre. You've done my bidding well, Scorpion. But now, I must return you to the Netherrealm. Never! Jax. Sonya disappears trying to find Jarek, so Jax tries to find her. He realizes that Sonya is fighting for Earthrealm again, so he helps. I did much better as Jax in this game than in any other Mortal Kombat game so far. He's pretty fun, I mainly used his dash punch and his missile, but really the most memorable part of Jax in this game is his ending cutscene. Come in Major Briggs, this is Lieutenant Sonya Blade. Whoa! Ah! Sonya, this is Major Briggs, come in. Sonya, this is Jax, are you there? So <laughs> Going somewhere, Jarek? Jax! I thought you were going to- Thought I was what? Dead? Like my heart being just tossed off the cliff? I'm- I'm sorry, Jax. Please, don't drop me. Wait, I, I promise. Too late, Jarek. You can't drop me. You have to uphold the law. You have to arrest me. Wait, wait, this is brutality. You can't do it. Wrong, Jarek. This is not a brutality. This is a fatality. Raiko. Used to be a general for Shinnok, 
he was thought to be killed. He comes back to fight for Shinnok. Raikou is pretty decent, his shurikens were cool, I mean, really he's a pretty basic character and to be honest I don't have too much to say about him. Goro fucked me up and god damn it I hate Goro with every fiber of my being. Speaking of Goro though, I really noticed he does look really weird in this game. Johnny Cage. After his death, he sees the Earthrealm warriors fighting again. He asks Raiden to take him to his mortal body so he can fight again. At least I enjoy Johnny Cage in this game more than the previous two. I don't like how he has the low fireball and the high fireball, I kinda just wish he had a neutral fireball. The shadow kick was fun, but it always is fun. The most noteworthy thing about my time playing as Johnny Cage was the fact that I did manage to do both of his fatalities. I guess I can start by thanking all my fans out there. Well, that's enough of the mushy stuff. I mean, let's get real here, huh? When am I gonna get some real competition? Come on, don't get silent now. Where are all the cheers? Hey, wait a minute. I'm your number one guy. I'm gonna remember this. Jarrett. Assumed the last member of the Black Dragon, Sonya Blade tries to kill him. She realized Shinnok and Quan Chi are more important, so Jarek helps Earth's warriors. Jarek was pretty cool. His ball move, which is basically Kano Ball, is what I enjoyed the most. Again, the unoriginal design is just dumb. He's not too special of a guy. I beat Goro. Fuck you, Goro. Rotten hell, you piece of shit. And then I also beat Shinnok. Why is Shinnok seriously so insanely easy in this game? I didn't use any weird method or break the game in any way, Shinnok is just stupidly easy. I have yet to lose a single round to him when I make it to him. Goro, on the other hand, is a dickhead. It's over, Jarek. Shinnok is dead. The good guys won. You're coming back with me. Never, Sonya. I agreed to help defeat Shinnok, not turn myself into the special forces. The Black Dragon, live on! <laughs> the Black Dragon died with Kano. You're the last one, Jarek. Never! Where's all the <laughs> Oh my god. Come in, Major Briggs. This is Lieutenant Sonya Blade. What? God. Sonya, this is Major Briggs. Come in. Sonya, this is Jax. Are you there? So this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya. She is a daughter of Adenia's ambassador. She helps refugees go to Adenia. Shinnok gets let through. Shinnok takes over. This point of the game is where all the different noises the characters were making started to piss me off. It's actually so annoying to hear the same sounds over and over again. Other than that though, Tanya is fine. I used her corkscrew kick mostly, managed to beat the fucking game again. Follow me, Liu Kang. Raiden has asked that I lead you to him. <laughs> what about the others? He has something special planned for them. <laughs> oh, no. Tanya, what's going on? <laughs> I don't know what Katana saw in you. Can't you see, Liu Kang? This is a trap! <laughs> Welcome, Shaolin Warrior. Your thunder god is beaten. Earth's warriors destroyed. You are the last remnants of the forces of light. Do you wish to beg for mercy from your new master, the Lord Shinnok? Never, sorcerer! Holy shit. Fool. Uh... <laughs> uh. Liu Kang didn't even stand a chance, what was that? Bujin. He's the god of wind. He is one of the last gods of Earth, so he tries to battle Shinnok. 
I just don't like the design of the new characters in this game. They're just so forgettable to me. Where's all the cool people? I don't know. Fujin is fine. I'm honestly starting to get bored of this game and I'm not even done yet. That says something about the quality in my opinion. Our forces of light have defeated Shinnok. Now, I must return to my duties as Earth's God of Wind. You have served your element well, Fujin. But we have a new mission for you. Raiden? Our battle with Shinnok's forces is over. I must move on to my new position as an Elder God. And you, Fujin, you must take my former position as Protector of Earth. Raiden, it will be my honor to succeed you. Take special care of the mortals of Earth. They are a great people but have the ability to self-destruct. Be patient, and offer your wisdom and guidance. Farewell, Thunder God. I will not fail you. That is why I picked you. Sub-Zero. The Link Kuei disbanded, but with Quan Chi posing a threat, he gets his brother, the original Sub-Zero, and wears his clothes. He has secrets that can help Shinnok. Despite him having a grand whopping total of three moves, Ice Freeze, Clone, and Slide, he was still pretty fun. His slide especially. Goro made me a little angry just because it's Goro and I can't stand to see him while I'm playing any game. I actually did lose once to Shinnok this time, but I still ended up beating the game. The battle is finished. Your quest for vengeance is over, Scorpion. You cannot kill a dead man. You have defeated my physical form, but my soul is eternal. You will pay for the massacre of my clan and family. Well done, Sub-Zero. Like your brother before you, you have served my purposes well. I serve no one. Not the Lin Kuei, and not you. Scorpion agreed to fight for us in exchange for freedom from the Nether Realm. A deal I had no intention of fulfilling. By killing him, you saved us the trouble. Both you and Scorpion were pawns for Shinnok. Scorpion! Holy shit. Look at that. He's pogging. He's pogging. Our battle is finished. You are now freed from my curse. Live well, Lin Kuei warrior. They're just standing there. They're just standing there at the end. Quan Chi. Quan Chi frees Shinnok. Shinnok gives Quan Chi the position of Arch Sorcerer for his help. Quan Chi is probably my favorite design of any new character in the game. He does actually look a little bit menacing. However, his moves were a bit uninspired and I got my ass handed to me for some reason. As payment for your loyal services, Quan Chi, I grant you the gift of your existence. My existence? Understand, Sorcerer. I consume all energies, including the life forces of all that live. But I shall spare you. If it weren't for me, you would still be a tortured soul, rotting in the pits of the Netherrealm. You dare question me? I do more than question you, Shinnok. I challenge you. Then you shall die. <laughs> what? Your powers are useless against me. How can this be? I am in possession of your once sacred amulet. Years ago, I delivered to you an exact duplicate, while I retained the original. I even fooled Raiden. Now I am ruler supreme. And you, Elder God, are finished! <laughs> Sonya. Sonya becomes a member of the Outworld Investigation Agency and helps Raiden. She warns the government about Quan Chi. Never been a giant fan of Sonya, but she's really just fine. I didn't hate playing as her, but I don't know. Goro got my ass. There's only so much I can say about each character to a point, and by the end I just don't know what to say. It's over, Jarek. Shinnok is dead. The good guys won. You're coming back with me. Never, Sonya. I agreed to help defeat Shinnok, not turn myself into the special forces. The Black Dragon, live on! The Black Dragon died with Kano. You're the last one, Jarek. Never! Come in, Major Briggs. This is Lieutenant Sonya Blade, over. Sonya, glad to hear you. 
you're alive. You actually sound happy to hear from me, Jax. Things get boring? Not since you followed Liu Kang into the nether realm. Well, it's over now. I'm returning to base. 10-4, Jax. Let's just take a second to talk about the stages in general. In my honest opinion, they're pretty boring. They all kind of just blend together and I can't think of any iconic stages that were introduced in this game. It was cool seeing Goro's lair in 3D, but the overall stage variety just wasn't that great. The fatalities in this game are probably the best the series had seen up to this point, but I still have some gripes. There are quite a few that are simply decapitation or splitting someone's body in half, but the ones that aren't are generally pretty creative. I couldn't pick my favorite between Tanya's or Raiko. I find it hilarious that Raiko can straight up just kick someone hard enough and their head spins in place. My least favorite has to go to Raiden. It's just someone getting impaled with no blood. Very boring. Thanks to Hell's Fury for the suggestion to talk about fatalities in the comments of last video. This game was much faster to complete than Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and Trilogy, but that's simply because there's far less content in this game in comparison to those games. The game overall isn't bad. My main issues with the game come in the form of the roster. Not a single new character introduced in Mortal Kombat 3 makes a return here. This really bums me out because characters like Cabal and Sindel feel so integral to Mortal Kombat at this point in the series. I want characters that stand out from each other, that have something unique about them. Somebody like Jarek doesn't do that for me. He just looks like a generic guy. But no one in this game is a looker. Of course, it's an old game and I understand that 3D gaming was in its infancy when this game released. I just think that maybe Mortal Kombat wasn't quite ready to make that leap yet. The game looks downright goofy. The weapon system feels pointless and tacked on, more of a gimmick to try and sell the game. The actual gameplay at first was pretty fun, fluid, and fast. As I played through though, it got really stale. The other Mortal Kombat games didn't make me feel that way. It felt like I was always discovering different strategies with different characters in the first three. In this game, every character feels kind of the same. A lot of moves on the new characters are borrowed from previous characters. This game just lacks the overall charm that was present in the first three games. The game isn't horrible, obviously I did way better in this game than I did the other games, but the magic of the first three games are completely lost. This game release signifies a little bit of a dark age for the series that wouldn't fully get rekindled until Mortal Kombat 9. The game after this one is Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub-Zero. After that is Mortal Kombat Special Forces. Both of these games are widely considered to be the absolute worst from the franchise. Okay, I've done enough rambling. I think I'm going to give this game a 5. I know that probably seems high based on what I just said, but I think the actual fluidity of the game and the basic combat in this game is still fun. It just lacks character. This game in, is just a total middle of the road, kind of mediocre. Okay, actually, as I'm writing this, I'm deciding that it's a 4. That fits the game better. 4 out of 10 for Mortal Kombat 4. Now, just for shits and gigs, I'm going to play the Game Boy version as well. Well, immediately I thought we were off to a good start because the music was actually better than the first game. Doesn't Look at this select is, screen. Who is this? Upon getting into the game, I realized the music wasn't stopping. It's just a short loop and getting pretty annoying after a minute or so. At least the second round of fighting has a different track, but it's really too bad that it still sucks ass. This is the Game Boy Color version, so at least it does look more visually appealing than Mortal Kombat 3 on Game Boy. This doesn't save the game though, because it still fucking sucks. I beat the game and felt absolutely nothing. 2 out of 10. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all for watching to the end. If you'd like to see me play through the rest of the games, consider subscribing. Thanks to everybody for the continued support. Have a good day.